On today's show, Kyle Kuzma turned down the Mavericks? Did the Mavs dodge a bullet with this one? Does it mean more to the Mavericks than it should? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the goals for the Mavericks to end the season with Dana Larson here on Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it Locked On Mavs your first listen today. The best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video, and comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section. Share one goal for the Mavericks for the end of the season. Curious what you guys have to say. Joining me weekly. You've seen her if you watched the beginning, the middle, and the end of any Mavs game. Dana Larson, Valley Sports Southwest. What you got for me, Dana? Hey, um, thank you for having me on after a five-game win streak and a successful Let's trade go. deadline. Let's go. It's this a great is time. Good. It's yes, a great time. It is. It is. It's a good time to be a Mavs fan. Absolutely. So we'll talk about the Mavs and talk about those additions and see what, what Dana has thought about PJ G- PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford. I almost just combined we, the two. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe that's their, you know, like Benifer. <laughs> we'll, t- we'll talk about the goals at the end of the season for this team and all that and things that we want to see the Mavericks do. But Dana, as always in the NBA, you think you're going to talk about one thing and then all of a sudden something else pops up. Let's talk about Kyle Kuzma. I want to start here because Josh Robbins of The Athletic dropped a story this morning. Uh, about Kyle Kuzma and about the Wizards and about how he was almost traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Josh Robbins has a quote from Kyle Kuzma in here that says this. There was a point in time, Dallas, they definitely did want me. He told The Athletic on Monday, this was, you know, before the Wizards played the Mavericks. Michael Winger, who's the, the, you know, in the front office for the Wizards, presented me with the trade and obviously didn't want to trade me and kind of left the decision up to me a little bit and asked me what I wanted to do. I told him I wanted to stay and continue to build something, and that was kind of the end of it. That's what Kyle Kuzma said. He made the decision to not come to the Dallas Mavericks. Now, you can look at this a couple of different ways. You can look at it, one, and say, man, the Mavs dodged a bullet with this one because if he just wanted to stay comfortable and stay with the Wizards, he did the opposite of what Spencer Dinwiddie said he did yesterday. Talked about that with slightly at the end of the show where Spencer Dinwiddie basically made that quote about how uh, if you go back to the Mavericks, it's like going to your, to your mama who just tells you, tells you everything's going to be okay. But if you go to the Lakers, then it's like you're you're going to your dad and he's like, no, you just got to fight for everything. Well, Kyle Kuzma went back to his mama who said it's going to be all right because he stayed with the Wizards where there's no expectations and nobody's going to take shots away from him. And he's, he's got it all sitting there for him. Or he could have gone to the Mavericks where he'd been a third, like, like the third star on the team. He would have been the, uh, or at least the third guy in the pecking order, he would have been fighting for this playoff spot and there would have been expectations for him. And so you're like, man, if he didn't want that, like if you don't want the competition, if you don't want to take it to that next level, then I, I'm glad that he didn't come here, right? Like if he wasn't ready for it. I'm disappointed this didn't happen because now we don't get to keep up with Kyle Kuzma's fashion on the <laughs> walk-ins to the American Airlines Center every single home game. no. I mean, what happened in the days of not burning bridges? These guys are out there just flaming it, you know, just, yeah, just fanning the flames, saying stuff, and and it all comes back around. I mean, who was it that just said the other day, this is, uh, um, this league is like one big brotherhood, right? And yet you're out there saying where you don't want to go and what you don't want to do. And I think... Nobody ever knows what, like, what Kyle Kuzma's real motivations are here, where he truly, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, strategies being played behind the scenes with players and agents and front offices, and especially at the trade deadline, because teams are thinking already to next, this off season and, and the season beyond and looking at guys' contracts, whatever it is. So there is obviously got to be way more to this than the fact that, it, you know, his timeline didn't seem to line up appropriately uh, with the Mavericks. Because at the same time, he was also quoted, 
you know, he's asked about losing Daniel Gafford to the Mavericks. And, and he said, Gafford's got the easiest job in sports now. <laughs> Kyle, you could have had the easiest job in sports now. You could have had all those wide open shots and, and you're just happy to, to send somebody else off. So it, it's hard to know exactly, you know, what's happening there. But for the Mavericks, yeah, you would love a guy of his size in that position who's going to give you 20 plus every night. I mean, that is truly what Kyle Kuzma does. He doesn't give you any defense and they got two guys that are going to give you defense. And that is the, if you want to look at that, you know, and say, if you're going to be sad that you didn't get Kyle Kuzma, here's the reasons to be okay with it. Right. I feel like Kyle Kuzma can give you defense, but he doesn't with the wizards. And so that's, he's gotten this reputation now. And honestly, like I kind of don't blame him. Like, Hey, if I go back to the Mavericks, I'll have to play defense again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to work really hard. I have to work it. I have to work at it. Yeah, he could. He could. We could take him at his word and say he really did like what they were building with the Wizards. But like, what are they building? What are you building? You got Bilal yeah. Koulibaly. You got Denny Avdia, who had a nice game against the Mavs the other night. You've got Jordan Poole, who's been a, like a complete disaster. Our lockdown Wizards guys are, are already done with him. Like they're already like mm. move on. We're done with this experiment. We don't want him here. Uh, you just traded. You just traded Gafford and other another like young player and i don't know what they're really building there like i don't like and also kuz talk about timelines kuzma's 28 years old his timeline doesn't line up with the rest of whatever the wizards are building with a 19 year old Bilal Koulibaly and you know and, and denny avdia the other quote that we kind of mentioned we keep talking about the timelines kuzma actually said this he was asked uh, about you know if he wanted to remain with the mavericks instead of you know and remain with the wizards instead of joining the mavericks and he said in my career i won a championship so i understand that when we play this game of basketball, it's not about contending for a playoff spot. It's about contending for an NBA championship. There's only three or four contenders, true contenders. I just felt like our timelines didn't line up. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me about timelines, but like talking about the Wizards timeline. But to me, this could mean that somebody else in the summer could trade could trade for him, and then possibly there, there's like there, there's a deal to an actual contender. He's like, all right, I don't want to do this trade now because the wizards had been saying the, the whole time during, during the whole lead up to the trade deadline. Well, we could just hold them because we have them under contract for a couple of years. And so I'm sure they're telling him that too. Hey, we can just trade you this summer or next trade deadline or whatever. Cause he's got a couple of years left on his deal. And so maybe there's a quote unquote true contender. Like he says that is lining up out there, but that's the only that's the only thing I can take from this because the timelines comment doesn't yeah. make any sense if you're talking and, about and the maybe, Wizards. Right. And maybe when you have already won, you just want to be the man. I mean, maybe for him, he didn't want to come to a team where he's the third best guy. He was maybe, just, you know, he was just sick of running as fast as he can <laughs> trying to get there quicker if he was the man. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing that back. Although that brings it back to Taylor Swift, which makes me the Chiefs. <laughs> and I'm a Broncos fan and I'm sick, wow. sick about them winning. So let's not do that. That John Elway moment where he's carrying the trophy, uh, that, that was weird. Weird with all the Chiefs around him and so the 49ers. It's literally, it was literally like my worst nightmare <laughs> as a Broncos fan. I can't imagine for my hero John Elway having to do that. Sorry, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I pushed us there. I pushed us there. You did. Uh, yeah, I just don't understand the timelines comment from Kuzma. And so, yes, you, you're right from what you said earlier. Is the Mavericks, it would have been great to have a player like Kuzma. But if he's not motivated, if he isn't like, get me out of here no matter what, it felt like to me, both PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford were so excited to go to a yes. winning situation, finally get back in the playoffs. Like in that opening presser, you, you were there, you could see PJ's eyes. Like I just felt like there was just fire in him of like, I want to win. I'm so tired of, the, of these teams. Yes. And everyone said that the PJ had a great approach to the game and always competed and all that. and was one of the bright spots, at least uh, attitude wise of the Hornets. And so now he goes to a situation where he can, and like, you want players that are excited to do that. And they're excited to buy in because you have to buy in with the Mavericks because you're, you're playing a very specific role, very specific role. And the Mavericks needed an injection of energy and excitement. They have been just, you know, dying they're just doing everything they can to get through this season with all of these injuries and kind of muddling through these really tough stretches right now you get to the trade deadline and you just get this injection of excitement and energy that's going to lift you for these last 28 games that's as big of of an, an intangible as all the tangible things that these two guys bring you and to your point about the wins 
the Mavericks have won more games this year already than those two teams, Charlotte and Washington combined this year. <laughs> I mean, for those two guys to come in and win two games in a row on a Saturday and a Monday, they're like, this is the most winning we've done. I mean, imagine just, you know, what that can do to kind of re-energize you and to ignite you. And, and that is just something that everybody will feed off of. The Wizards have won two games in a row once this season. <laughs> You'll never guess the two teams they beat. I'm thinking Detroit. Nailed it. First one. Okay. Okay. Um, Detroit and uh, San we Antonio. We oh, nailed it. <laughs> Detroit, San Antonio, back to back. Yes. Uh, yeah. They, that was their, their only two game win streak this season. So, oh, uh, see. All right, Kyle Kuzma decided he didn't made the decision himself to not come to the Mavericks. So I feel vindicated because my prediction was the Mavericks would trade for Kuzma. They had a trade on the table. Kuzma ruined my prediction. <laughs> but the Mavs move on. They got two guys that they really like. Like Dana said, they're bringing in an ejection of energy. Let's talk about what we've seen from those guys in two games so far this season coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Hungry Root. Hungry Root is something that everybody needs because, you know, you get stuck with like the same old recipes all the time. You get stuck with, all right, I go to the grocery store, I buy stuff, and it ends up just like in the back of my fridge. Grocery shopping and meal planning for specific dietary needs and preferences can be challenging. If this applies to you or someone you know, please share how this helps uh, with you. Hungry Root has helped so many people because they have uh, different kinds of things that you can select for dairy-free, soy-free, peanut allergy, shellfish allergy, and they will they will adapt all the plans that they send to you. You got to love that. It's not just one size fits all. They know that they can send that to you and it saves you time. Customers save five hours a week using Hungry Root. Imagine all the podcast, the extra podcasts I could do in five hours a week. I could do a whole other slate of shows in a week. You save money as well. So check out Hungry Root. It's offering uh, Locked on NBA listeners, 40% off your delivery. 40%? That's a lot. 40% off your delivery and free veggies for life. Go to HungryRoot.com slash Locked On to get 40% off your first delivery and then get your free veggies. HungryRoot.com slash Locked On. Don't forget to use the link HungryRoot.com slash Locked On so they know that we sent you. Check it out. HungryRoot.com slash Locked On. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you. Dana, at the game the other day, I was walking through the concourse and just got this guy in a Luca Slovenia jersey he walks up to me and goes, Raccoon Squad! Like, it's just in the middle, of, <laughs> in the middle of the concourse. Amazing. And I love that guy. That I love it. Shout out. Made, made my yes. day. <laughs> made my day. Uh, all right, Dana, let's get into these new guys. P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford. We've seen two games of them now. And... They've brought a lot to the table. Gafford, an amazing 16 points, 17 rebound, five block game, just eating up minutes, eating up time. P.J. Washington closed the game the other night. Let's start with Daniel Gafford, though, since he's been putting up the, the numbers. What's your initial takeaway, or what have you seen from Daniel Gafford? He's just, he's like the perfect fit. You know, he is exactly what they needed on the court. And, and I am already completely a huge fan of his you know, when he comes to the post-game press conferences oh, yeah. because he's best. a terrific personality. Um, he's from Arkansas. He's got a little bit of that really, you know, Southern charm. And he, he's winning you over really quickly with all the stuff that he's saying. Um, and he's winning you over with all the stuff that he's doing. I mean, to have a guy that's, you know, 6'10", 6 6'11", 6 a wingspan that's 7'2", and a real high motor, you know, any, any strong everybody's comparing, you know, the, the Derek Lively comparison, but it's like Derek Lively five years into an NBA career. Yeah. Right. So you've got a little more, a little more bulk on you. You've got a little more um, experience behind you. And for him too, I think the position is one in which you can come to a new team and kind of just jump off the page pretty quick. Right. It, 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 they've been, they've kept it pretty simple for him with point guards like Luca and with Kyrie, who can just throw it up. And as you said, throw it to the moon and I'll come down with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, and he just, he, you just love the energy on the boards, the extra effort on, you know, on the offensive glass, because you, you've just, we've watched the Mavericks just really get killed in the rebounding department for a long time. And to see them, they're out rebounding opponents here. Um, you know, I know uh, let's Finally. all stand, let's, let's take go. a moment, a moment <laughs> for this, right. Their, their, their defense has been better. Yes. They've played opponents without stars or they've, um, 
played teams like Washington or whatever, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, these, you, you got to build something defensively and to feel just to start a game feeling like you're not going to get killed on the boards. Um, it already, it's just, it's been super exciting to see. And I think you're not overreacting. I think Mavs fans should be really excited about these two additions. It was telling in the second game when he checked in to the game and he got like a, you could, a noticeable, a noticeable cheer from the crowd. We're like, oh yeah, I remember this this guy from last game who had who got all those rebounds. And like, I'm excited about this new yeah. guy. Uh, that's just like the impact on you know a lot of people that go to Mavs fans can't. They're probably you know casual fans to the, for the most part. So if you they remember somebody like, oh that guy made an impact in that game. I, I thought that was was telling. He's been he's been really good. Like his his rebounding, his the offensive rebounds, and like he gets contested rebounds. It's not just mm. standing in a spot and like grabbing a rebound with nobody around you. He'll he'll fight, and that gives the Mavericks extra possessions in an area that they didn't before. They really struggle with that, and you know what? He helps them get stops too. What did the, what have the Mavericks struggle with for years? Even going back to the Western Conference Finals run, like they struggled ending plays. They struggled struggled with ending plays on defense. Mm. Finally, getting the rebound, ending the offensive possession for the other team, and he helps you do that. And he helps you grab that board and kick out. And he's immediately looking for a guard to kick it to. And like we've had more outlet passes, and he runs the floor. Him and Lively both run the floor in transition, which is why we've already seen those those like you know hail mary football passes from Luca down the court right to Gafford, and he'll finish those. Like, like there's some there's some things here and there where you look at and you're like all right, well I wish he was a little bit better at the rim against some some finishers. You wish that he was making some better decisions in the short roll, but like if those are the things that you're nitpicking right now, he's come in and he's fit so well in just two games. Yeah, and that that's just it. Those things I maybe some of those things aren't in his bag, you know, and, and may never be. But when it comes to stuff like um, and he did admit, he said, I got in my head a little early. There's yeah. a lot of pressure when you are traded for at the deadline and you are, you know, everybody's talking about how you're exactly what this team needs, and you guys could be game changers, you could take it this team to the next level. Not just everybody. Luka Doncic said, Luka. this is the yes. backup center I've been waiting for for three years. There's, right. there's a pressure with that, even if it's an excitement. Absolutely. And so I really thought, too, I actually kind of got a little giggle out of it. <laughs> you know, the way he started the game against Washington, I was like, all right, Gaff, settle down. You don't have to shoot all the balls. <laughs> right? Right? Because it, it, he was patting every, his rebounding stats. <laughs> but <laughs> not a bad idea. That's true. But I, I actually liked that. I thought he's not going to be tentative. He's not trying to ease his way into anything here. He's actually going to go try to show what he can do, take advantage of these opportunities. And you know what? You get a sense that Luca and the Mavs and Kyrie want to set him up. They want to set him up to do that. They're okay with him trying some of those things too. And to your point about running, I mean, the more the more of those long full court passes that Luca can throw, the less full courts he's running. And wearing himself out, you know? So if you've got guys that can run and he can find you and he's so strong, he can place it perfectly there uh, for a bucket or whatever. Those are really exciting things. You've got, you got more athletic, you got deeper at the positions you needed to, you got bigger in the front court, you got scoring there too. So it was, um, you know, there's a lot to like about this. Oh, absolutely. You love what you see from, from Gafford. And let's talk about PJ Washington here. Uh, for, for a little bit he's well no let's keep talking about Gafford because okay okay uh yeah he, he's just he's just adding something and him and Lively together like playing 48 minutes of that and then also this is really an underrated thing about both of those guys like I, I would love the idea of 24 minutes of both right you just you get 24 minutes of that but Maxi has been playing really well at the five the last two weeks or so and the Mavericks do need that look, that other look where they can get shooting on the floor. They close with it against the Wizards where you need that. He, he, you know, Maxi has been finishing at the rim and like attacking closeouts. And he's been he's been adding some extra stuff, passing really well, I, I thought, too, out of the short roll. And you don't have to close with Gafford or Lively because like you didn't bring in somebody that is, you know, getting paid so much that you have to close with them. And I think that's kind of an underrated thing about both these guys that they can still go to and close with Maxi and it won't ruffle so, so many feathers that it messes up team chemistry. And Maxi was out for two months, right? He's fresh. So number one, I love that. He should be really, really fresh. And he's a guy that you've had in your system. He's got that corporate knowledge. Mm. He's played in big playoff games with you 
Luke is super comfortable with him. This is a guy that can step in and, and you know exactly what you're getting from him. And he is just, he's now trending in all the right directions, right? He's getting his legs back under him. He's getting stronger. He's, he's getting the shot, the rhythm and the confidence. And for Maxi, when, when the confidence comes in, you are really, really in a good place with him. They went from being like so thin and small at this position Yes. To now deep and big, right? Because you just we're so we we really forget when Max is out for that period of time how valuable he is and has been over the years. And it's it's been so rewarding, I'm sure, and satisfying for him to play like he is and you know, and and be looked to to, to you're not you're not looking to him to fill up the box score. So much of what he does is just make life difficult on other players like you go look at you know Kuzma's numbers to see what Maxi did or you know that kind of a thing to the help defense cuz he's smart he's he's getting there he's strong he's going to you know the vertical um defender that you need under the rim there i mean he's just bringing so much of that stuff and i feel like one of the biggest goals for the Mavericks going forward is that continued development for Maxi and for Josh Green in those mm, areas. Yeah. And you're going to have a team that's going to be looked at, you know, as a good defensive team down the stretch. Um, and I amazing. said it. I know I said it. <laughs> that would be right? a turnaround. Could that be? Could that be? But, I mean, you finally, when you get healthy and you've got more personnel who fill those those roles and those needs, you can you can do that. Coming up, let's talk about P.J. Washington because I do think that he factors into this team will, will be a better defensive team down the stretch. I think he's a really big factor in that. We saw him close the game against the Wizards. What have we seen from P.J. Washington? Talk about that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. to what bring home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. If you need things like superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. Listen, they've got 122 million parts to choose from. So you know that you're going to find the right thing. They've got that eBay guaranteed fit, so you know that the part is guaranteed to fit your car every time or your money back. Cars, trucks, SUVs. I don't know. They probably have semi-truck stuff <laughs> because just like with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring that win home. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Shut it down! Oh, Let's go home! All right, Dana. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening <laughs> and you were like, Nick didn't talk for like a really long time. My dog totally just threw up in my office. <laughs> oh. And now he is now he's just looking at me like, you know how like a kid goes to you and it's like, <laughs> I threw up. That's what my dog is looking at me right now. Like, I threw and, up. <laughs> and now you just have to do the pod with that at your feet. It's not, it's not that bad. Anyway. It's <laughs> like over. Guy. It's like over the, he what's up? You good? He's not. He's not. He's like, I, I threw up. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something better than throw up, and that's PJ Washington. <laughs> he's been much. He's been much better than that. <laughs> that's a segue. We're only professionals here, Dana. <laughs> only the pros. PJ Washington played two games. He's averaged thirty minutes, which is second on the Mavericks in the last two games. I think that's notable. And he didn't even play a lot of the fourth quarter of that Thunder mm. game. So he he comes in. He's in this winning situation and he's kind of like the Swiss army knife guy. He's going to be doing a lot of different things. His numbers are not going to stand out at you too much to me. You know, 11, 11 and a half points, five rebounds, two assists. Um, you know, like, but he's, he's plus 16 in the last two games, like just for, in like in, on average, he's really impacted their winning the last two games. And I think that Jason Kidd had already found somebody that he like is ready to trust in that closing lineup. They started him already. Like they're, I think they're just ready to just give him all the, like the keys to everything. Well, why not? Right. I mean, here's a guy who has a great pedigree, a uh, high draft pick, high expectations. Uh, and then a little bit hard to know because of the situation he's been in playing for a team, you know, for Charlotte, his whole career, a team that, you know, didn't have a ton of success, but he definitely is a guy that has a whole lot of game on both sides. Right. And, and I love what Nico Harrison said 
about him. He's somebody we want to really hold accountable mm. because we want to get the most out of him. He said, he said the game can come so easy to him. Um, and when you're in a losing situation, you know, it's always, it, it would be human nature, maybe not to be 110% on both ends every single night, but they know that there, here's a guy that has offensively, he, you know, we, maybe we've got to be a little patient with the three point shot. Definitely. If that comes around, I mean, I think he's just one for nine from three in his, his first two games with the Mavs. Um, he's going to learn to shoot those wide open shots and they're going to go in. I'm sure. Um, at, at a higher clip than he is, but he's got like a deadly mid range game. You know, he can, um, he can, uh, you, I, you can tell he's got great court vision, a good feel for the game. He can absolutely put the ball on the floor, make a play for himself, which I actually, I loved the way the game ended for him the other night against Washington. Cause it wasn't a great shooting night necessarily. Uh, but he had a big bucket late and I yes, felt like that was going to be, it was at a big time. It was an important, uh, it was important play at that time. And I just felt like that was going to be, he was going to leave feeling really good about things, but I also think it's not going to be just about his offensive numbers, right? No. They're going to look to him to do a lot. I think they're asking a lot of him. And so we do probably need to kind of let it have, let it breathe for a couple of games so that he can get, um, get his feet under him. I was thinking the other night, a couple of things kind of stood out to me. May, there may be some information overload happening too, when you jump into a new team. And at first they just kind of throw you out there and it's just go read and react, play basketball. But then you get like a day where everything's thrown in you, you know, you've got Luca talking to you, you've got kid and the coaching staff and, and strategies. And you're trying to learn terminology and game plan and and, and the next two or three games, I, I wonder if they can be a little overwhelming sometimes too. So it feels mm. like let's, I want to give him, you know, some time before we sit back and start totally grading how it all feels. Well, and he's from here. So he's got, you know, family right. and people here. And so you've got people coming to you for tickets, he already said, and you've probably got Mav social and Mav, you know, Mav's like Absolutely. taking like pictures and stuff. Like you've got all of the things that you've got to do. It's just a whirlwind to try and change teams. I noticed him right after the, the game the other night, actually, we're finishing the post game show. And I looked down to the court. He had a bunch of family and friends who had come down to see him and he was holding the, holding the baby and taking pictures and saying hello. So to, to your point, there is a lot probably going on all around him. So he's running for an election. He was holding babies <laughs> and taking babies. pictures. <laughs> he's doing all I'll that. vote for him. Yeah. Shooting wise, he's not Derek Jones Jr., right? Like he's not coming in as somebody that has not been a good three point shooter his whole career and has really, you know, has really struggled. And the Mavs are trying to like get that out of him for the first mm -hmm. time, right? Like that's not, that's not him. He has struggled this season so far with, with the, the Hornets, but in the past, he shot like 40% from three. In, in seasons. And so it is there. And he's, he's a guy that when he scored 43, two couple weeks ago, he hit seven threes in that game. Like, like, I think eventually like, you're right. The shot will come around. It does seem like there's a little overload. Um, but the offense, like you said, that clutch bucket against the, the wizards that. where he's attacking a closeout, he goes to the, the hole and he can hit a little floater. When's the last, uh, my friend Tovash what said, it's Josh Howard, but the, mm. like that he reminds him of, but I'm like, when's the last role player that could do something like that? Attack a closeout and finish with a, like a floater like that. It's just, it's hard to come up with somebody that wasn't like kind of a star, you know? Well, and, and, and I love too, that it is somebody that, um, you, that comes in with size too. And, and, and a wingspan like yeah. he has to both of these guys, you know, I, I guess PJ Washington, maybe at the power forward, is he six, seven? He, he may not be considered, you know, super big for that position, but he's got really long arms. Um, and I feel like so much of that, but, but that, but he's still very athletic, um, and, and, you know, and coordinated and can certainly do plenty of things with the ball. So I feel like there's a nice combination there. That's just, he's going to be a really solid rotational player for them. And adding the defense and then the finishing around the rim, that, that wingspan lends itself to yeah. finishing. He's had a couple of value plays already. He's had a couple of plays where he, he finished at the rim. And I look over at Rafael Barlow from locked on NBA big board at the game, the wizards game last night. And I go, Grant Williams, wasn't going to finish that play. <laughs> like, like, right. If Grant Williams can take shots, I'm going to take shots. So <laughs> Grant, like, Grant Williams, wasn't going to finish that kind of, that kind of a play at the rim and, and PJ can finish some of those plays. So he's adding just, you know, versatility and things that the Mavericks didn't have. 
He can move his feet really quick on defense. I've been impressed by that so far. His ability, and then he just he wants to take every best matchup. He was on Kuzma last night. He was on SGA right you know, in the Thunder game. Like he's he's taking those matchups and he's he's ready to go. And I think too, it's going to be really. There's a really interesting stretch right out of the All Star break. So I don't mm. know what he's good, how he's going to handle his All Star break. Right when you're new to a team and a city and an organization, you're coming in. Do you stay and do you spend your whole time kind of? studying up or is it probably is it better to go get a break and whatever so i don't know Mm. how that'll be for him but right out of the break you've got the suns the pacers a couple of times um in this month the Cavs, like there are going to be some heady matchups um for to see you know where you had a little more time to prepare and to kind of game plan and to get comfortable and i think those are going to be that's what i'm really excited to see um, when you come out of the break and you've got some, you know, really, really top tier matchups. They've got one game left. We'll have you covered for the Wednesday game against the Spurs. Hopefully we get to see Wemon Yama because we didn't get to see him in the AAC the first time. That was his. Oh, the late scratch was the uh, worst. Yeah. Because he stepped on a, a one of the ball boys. Oh, the ball boys foot feet right. in, the, in warmups just because he was he was flailing around after a dunk. Uh, <laughs> I blame Wemby for that one. I was you're, say. you're the seven four guy. Maybe they'll look- send all the ball boys to the seats. <laughs> Nobody rebound for Wemby and warm up. They're all wearing the, uh, the, the, uh, the reflector jackets that like <laughs> construction workers have to wear. <laughs> for the guys that land planes. Yeah. The, they have the little sticks, <laughs> the mini lightsaber sticks. Uh, yeah. So we'll have slightly not have covered after that. And then, uh, no show on Thursday night as I'm going to all-star. What? I'm excited to go to all-star wow. and I'll have tons of stuff for you and all that. Uh, I'll watch lively. I'll watch Luca not care about the all-star game. I'm excited. To, I'm excited to see all of it. Uh, and then Dana will join back with us probably next week. Guys, thanks so much Can't for listening wait. to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Boom.